Okay, so this is how you wire up a Renai bath controller. See it right there. It's got the temperature setting, priority on and off. It's really easy. You run. Uh, well, I'm running 18 gauge. I think the minimum you can run is 22 gauge. It's um, just doorbell wire, and this runs either to another controller in. Uh, well, I guess I say it's in parallel, but runs to another controller, and then ultimately it runs to the to the um, hot water heater, the tankless hot water heater. And it's real simple to wire up. There's no rocket science. It's just 12 volts. I just kept it fairly straightforward by um, by tying white to white, and then whatever the other color is, whether it's black or red, I just tie those two together, and. Uh, what you'll notice is when you do uh, wire them, I've got the power still on, what you'll notice is the unit itself will will turn on. So let's do it real quick. It's pretty straightforward, white to white. I just use really small um, wire nuts and then I tape them so they can't move. But that feels pretty good. And then when I connect this one, hopefully, the, uh, the unit should turn on. Let's see what happens. So there's the unit. Let's see. Or touch it together. And there you go. So you can see the unit's on now. And so I've got one down in the kitchen. Well, I do now as part of the remodel effort. And we've got one in the master bathroom and one in the spare bathroom. So this is the first in the in the series. It, that runs up to the master bathroom and the master runs to the spare and then the spare runs back to the water heater outside. And um, yeah, you can do all sorts of interesting things, especially with the one we've got upstairs, but this one's fairly straightforward. It's, you select the priority, it tells you what the water temperature will be, and you can just turn it up and turn it down. There are um, breakers, not breakers, yeah, breaker switches, I guess you call them, um, in the hot water unit itself that lets it go all the way up to 140 uh, when it gets shipped, it only actually does 120, but um, I've obviously flipped those, so I can do 140 for hot uh, dry uh, dishwasher washers. And obviously, you, know, you can take it all the way down too, so 98's the coolest, and um, on really hot days, it's nice to have a lukewarm shower, so you just set the temperature there, turn the hot water on full, and away you go. Anyway, simple as that. There's a uh, cover that comes with it. to look something like this and uh, we'll just mount it temporarily and um, you can see what it looks like. Actually, before we mount it, I'm going to tape up the, uh, the connections here so they don't move around too much. Last thing you want is for the wire nuts to come unstuck. So uh, I don't know if this is actually helpful or not, but um, at least it keeps the wires together, and hopefully it'll keep the unit from shutting down because of the the wires disconnect. So I just tape it around the wire nut. And my theory is if the wire nut can't turn and the wires are tied together tightly, it's going to be very hard for them to dis disconnect from each other. Not impossible, but hey, a little bit of insurance. Just tie 
of these ones together. Good to go. Now, just one more piece of tape. So as you might imagine, mounting it's fairly straightforward. Today we're just going to mount it here. As I said, it's just a temporary thing to see where we ultimately want to put it. Looks like I've got a, a uh, hole already that it will go into. Trusty little palm driver. This thing's pretty cool by the way. Really helpful when you're doing any sort of ducting, I need to get into a close in space, it works really well. Okay, got that on. Get this bad boy. Clicks into place like that. If you need to take it off, there's little clips underneath it, and just pull it straight off. It's pretty, pretty easy. That's that. Job done. All right, so someone asked me a while ago how to wire the bath controllers to a um, Reno hot water system. And um, I haven't looked at it in a long time, but uh, we'll take it out and I'll show you what I did. So the first thing you do is you remove these uh, side clips here, those side panels. Let's pull straight out, pretty straightforward. Out for spiders. Sometimes they're straightforward. Yeah, naturally, I wonder. So they slide in this way and they pull out that way. So they pull on the right side here and on the left side there, they go under these clips. Okay. And you take the front cover off. And you should probably turn the power off, but we're not going to. Um, we'll risk it. So, it's four screws. screws out. By the way this is a um, RU98 unit. It's probably not the current model but it was the current one when, when I bought it. And theoretically all things being equal should be able to pop this bad boy off. Like I said I haven't taken it off in over two years now so let's we'll see what's going on. It seems to be quite happily stuck. All right, so there you have it. As you can see, the wiring is fairly straightforward. At least I think you can see. Let me zoom in a little. All the action happens down here somewhere. Uh, yeah, about there. Right, I'm just kidding, the wiring is not that straightforward at all. But um, here's my. Where's my wire? Here's the wire I got. Okay, so it runs up through here. Let me give you a close up of that. There's a, um, 
grommet that's available to you. Dang. Right in there, you should be able to see it. Or not. Okay. So right behind these wires, there's a couple little grommets. And I run my wire up, it's uh, this one here, into the brown one. It comes all the way over into this panel on the very right hand side. So I'll give you a bit of a close up of that one. Okay, so here's my doorbell wire. It's um, I think the minimum you can use is 22 gauge. I usually usually I use 18 gauge only because I've got a fairly long run from the kitchen to the master bathroom to the spare bathroom um, downstairs to here. So basically the master bathroom's on the opposite side of the house so um, it's quite a long run and uh, you know once you wire them together each of the units can control the temperature of the hot water which is kind of cool. So anyway here's my brown wire runs into this thing here. This says uh, don't connect 120 volts because it's a 12 volt system. There are a bunch of uh, dip switches I think I referred to, them, referred to them as breakers a while ago. So I have a configuration, I don't remember the exact switch combina uh, dip switch combination, but um, the unit lets you, uh, or ships from the factory uh, with a maximum output of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, but there's a dip switch you can flick, and that ups it to 140. And so I use 140 for washing dishes for example to get a um, you know, nice clean wash out of it then the dishwasher doesn't have to heat the water so um, that's why I have a controller in the kitchen itself the dip switch I've got the only switch that I've got is number six there I'll see if I can zoom in and show you that one might be a bit of a tough ask we'll see no maybe not so you see those yellow dip switches right there let's just zoom right in okay so as you can see the only one I've flicked is number six I believe that's giving me the um, the uh, 140 degree Fahrenheit water option. All the others, um, well down here on the white ones are off except for the very first one. So number one in the white ones, which is a little tougher to see. I'll bring it around this way and give it a look. <coughs> so hopefully it'll focus in a second. All right, there we go. So you can see the white switches, the only one that's turned on is number one. And up here, it looks like the only one that's turned on is, in the yellow ones, is number six. And that should be all you need to, need to mess with. Um, I'm not sure if, I'm pretty sure it's the yellow ones, or the orange switches that are the ones for the 140. I think this is just basic. Look up, and I'll put some comments in the uh, some notes in the comments. So, with that being said, next you've got to figure out where to run the wire to. So we'll get back to that. All right. So as I said, brown wire comes in, goes all the way into these little contacts right here. You can see there's a contact there at the bottom. At least I think you can. Yep. Yeah, perfect. All right, should be good enough, I think. All right, 
So what you need to do is, um, I don't think it matters which way, honestly, but I've got the white wire connected to the top contact, I've got my red wire connected to the bottom contact, it doesn't seem to matter which way you wire the, um, the controllers up, and that's all you do. So once that's wired, it sends 12 volts down the line, picks up what gets picked up by your first controller, and then you just essentially wire them in uh, in parallel, and it'll send it send power to second controller and the third controller and so on and so forth. I think you can have a maximum of four controllers on there. So fairly straightforward. Use these two contacts, turn your switches, make sure the white switch. Uh, dip switch number one is set to on. Make sure that uh, dip switch number six on the um, on the orange ones or the upper unit is is set to on. All the rest of them are off, and you should be good to go. And that's that. So we'll put the panel back on now. Put the screws in my pocket. Screw gun. screws in correctly. Okay, it's on. Maybe little trim pieces that cover the screws. You can see these, uh, hopefully you can see them, these little tabs here slide underneath these things. Theoretically, it shouldn't be too difficult. Not exactly the world's greatest, but they work. Yeah. That's pretty much it.